Okay, awesome. All right, well, welcome. Guys, welcome. And appreciate everybody logging in and, and uh, joining us for episode five, Dishing with Diane, a fireside chat. And we are here today. We are joined by uh, Kyle Sante of Kyle Sante Media. And Kyle is like amazing photographer with like real estate photography and he just really makes uh, properties pop. And so the focus of our topic today is just to really pick Kyle's brain and sort of learn sort of behind the lens what really goes on. And you as homeowners, home sellers, home buyers, whatever you may be, maybe you're realtors, just to learn a little more and understand sort of the method to the madness. There really is a method, there's a purpose and he's just gonna share his knowledge and please ask questions. You know, this is a engagement thing. So I wanna hear from you and we'll, we'll feel things in real time. But Kyle, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. All right, you wanna tell anybody a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, not much. It's just, I, mean, I think yeah, this is my sixth year in business and um, been working mostly with a real estate agents. Recently I've been headed towards a little bit more of the commercial side of things, but Still mostly real estate agents and uh that's pretty much it without getting too boring okay all right well so <laughs> i don't know what do you want to tell us what's what's the what's something that's really important to understand um about what you do and why you do it and sort of the when you come into a home and the things you do uh well for for one is having a nicely staged home uh making sure everything's ready making sure everything's in the right order and everything because like we were talking about a little bit um you typically have stagers come in a stager will stage things that will make sense to somebody's eye inside the room, but uh, behind the lens, it may look a little bit different. So okay. even though some things look good inside of a room, set up a certain way, it may look better. Now granted, it's probably small things, like maybe like a plant here or there, mm -hmm. but, um, but that's that's one, of, that's one of the things, making sure it kind of looks nice, make sure it's ready to go. It's, it's tough to kind of move around the house when it's like, well, let's move all this stuff into this room and then and then we'll go, go to this here. room and then we'll move all this stuff. So that, mm -hmm. that kind of makes, that kind of messes up the flow a little bit. Uh, so it's good to have everything ready to go. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of the first thing. So what kinds of things, you know, cause like you said, like you stage a home, you get it all really looking great. And you know, you tell a client, you know, get your house, do this, move this, clear out this. But then as a photographer, you're saying you're looking at it a little differently for those photos. And what's the importance of those photos in the whole process of selling a home? Like, why does it matter? So it matters so much because if your house looks nicer than the next door neighbors, then they're going to go to that house and not, not okay. the next door neighbors. Now, granted, in the hot market like this, people are just probably going to go to every house. Um, <laughs> the, the, the houses that are out there, yes. The houses that, the few that are yes. out there. But with, even with that being said, you need to almost stand out even more when there's less inventory than when there's more inventory. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, maybe you can speak to it a little bit. Okay. But, All right. Um, I can't. I just want to say hey to some people. Hi, Elizabeth. Hey, Lisa. So Lisa's an agent. So yeah, we got some mixed audience here. Awesome. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Appreciate you all. Oh, I know Lisa. Yeah. Awesome. So some things that seem so crazy, like really, I have to put this particular piece of pottery over here and do this here and I need to close my toilets. And I need... yes, it matters because, you know, we're trying to sell. We're trying to get your property. It's like a product. It's like we're selling inventory. We're it's selling not, a product. Yeah. Like if you walk down the aisles of a grocery store, you're going to pick a product that really stands out, that right. jumps out. So it's very similar. And what Kyle's saying is there's a whole different perspective when he's behind the lens and getting those photos that are going to end up being on uh, a listing uh, site, uh, uh, like a, a multiple listing site, but also all over the internet, right? And what we know statistically, I think the last time I looked this up, I think the last statistic I heard was 95% of buyers start online. So the photography is so important. Photography, video. People are buying with their eyes. And it's yeah. like Tinder. Yeah. If anybody's out there, you know, and you swipe left, swipe right, that's how it is now. They'll see your home, they'll look, they'll be like, no, 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 ooh, nice. Looks like a magazine. So go ahead, exactly. speak yeah. to that. Well, so yeah, I mean, and we talked a little bit like, you know, if there's a house that doesn't look that nice and the realtor doesn't want to trick the, the buyer, it's mm -hmm. still, you still want to show the house in the best way, no matter, no matter what, because the idea is to get as many feet in the door as possible. Mm -hmm. the, more, the more feet in the door, the more likely you're going to get A, an offer, B, multiple offer situation, 
more, you know, over asking, even though that's kind of the norm now. <laughs> yes. But it, I mean, even, even <laughs> yeah. more so. But, but even, even so, I think even in this hot, hot, hot market, and I don't know what your thoughts are, but, and I have some agent friends out there, so please chime in, ask questions, offer your input too. This is interactive. Um, even in this market where things are moving quickly, and this is true all over the country, so I know I've got people, you know, watching, you know, up north and everywhere else, but in this hot market still, you want your house to still pop. You want it to be standout because that is going to always, not always, most often, never say always, most often command the best and highest. And in these multiple bid situations, you know, you want to be that standout property. Yeah, especially when now uh, you are getting a lot of people in the door, but you're having homes sell before you list. Mm -hmm. So some people are doing sight unseen. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting a sight unseen, if you still have nice photos that you can send them, yes. then they still have a better idea of like, okay, this is kind of what I'm buying. You know, that is a super good point because yeah. this is a different day and age. We are getting a lot more properties sold, as you said, sight unseen. People I have, from moving from California yeah. or whatever, and if they couldn't come, it's like, well, let's yeah. just put an offer on it so we get it, and then you can send them the photos, yeah. and then they can Yeah, so it almost makes idea. photography, it even has a more paramount purpose in, in a very strong yeah. market like this. And then you this. talk about the videos, and yeah. the 360 tours, and the aerials, and all, you know, everything. So okay. uh, yeah. it's all important. All right. So what questions do you guys have? You have a question for Kyle about, you know, kind of what he does, how he does it, what the photography, I mean, lighting. That's always a challenge. Let's talk about lighting, because okay. I find that to be the biggest challenge. The indoor lighting, the kind of bulbs, and then then the ambient lighting and then your natural lighting. So let's yes, talk about so lighting. So that's probably the one thing that um, will trip people up the most. If I just handed you a camera and I said, just take a picture of this, of this living room or whatever. Setting up the lighting and the composition is gonna be the hardest because you do have, like you said, you have the, the light coming in from the, the outside, the, the bulb, the fluorescent bulb from the inside, mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever they have. Um, and that's all mixing together. So you need to still make that look flattering somehow. A lot of that is um, sometimes you can get away with just the ambient light in the room, but a lot of times you're going to get want to introduce a uh, flash, mm -hmm. bouncing a flash, and this is probably going to get boring for some people, but bouncing off a flash off something white will then kind of even out all the colors in, oh. in the room. So that's why I remember you asked me one time, mm -hmm. like, how do how come your colors are so much different? It's like, well, that's why you hit you hit a, a lot of light yeah. onto something white okay. that kind of just disperses throughout okay. and kind of evens everything out, lighting that yeah, uh, color-wise. Yeah, I do notice in your pictures there's less orangey Orange and, and yellow lows and, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so lighting. So sometimes um, on the consults, like when, when a stager comes in, they will also talk about the lighting in your home and they will often recommend changing out certain mm -hmm. light bulbs, things like that, to get that right coloring and that right lighting. And so it's really about every single little detail. I mean, it is. Yeah, it is. It is fun. And even in my own home, I have in my kitchen, I have one yeah. bulb that's like an older one. Yeah. So it's like the wrong color. So it bothers me, but it's like I'm kind of too lazy to do that. But if I was listing my house, I would change it. Oh, so but I can't tell you how many times I have photographed like a bathroom or something, and there's, you know, the three kind of sconces or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. One, <laughs> one's yellow, one's white, and one's missing, oh and it's like goodness. it drives me kind of nuts. Yeah. So I kind of have to angle it to where you don't really see it. So see, it's a challenge. Yeah. I can't personally meet like. We have tried different. I, I don't like what I call it looks septic. Like it looks so that bluish hue, that whatever. Yeah, I, yeah. So yeah, we one time we placed all our overhead lights, and it looked like I was in a hospital or something. And I'm like, this has to go. So I finally <laughs> figured out Kelvin's and lighting. Yeah, there's yeah, a whole yeah. lots yeah. of lighting people. And that's similar to photography. Not to bore you, yeah. but yeah, there's lots of lights in your home and what you're yes. doing and hues and all that. And but, if you're trying to sell a view as well, like not every house needs. You're not necessarily selling a view, especially if like house yeah. or you know, something not flattering, but when you are, if, like, if, it, if it's on a golf course mm -hmm. or a lake or something like that, you are going to want to pull in that view, which again, what you're saying is, uh, to go back a little bit, you were saying it's, it's kind of difficult to make all that match, right. so that's when, you know, adding flash or adding different multiple okay. exposures and kind of blending them together, so that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. which it, so you take some different pictures and then you blend them back at the studio kind Correct. of thing? Yes. Okay, yeah. so you take some different lighting and then sort of pull Correct. it together? Yep. 
So someone's asking, or maybe it's a comment, I'm not sure. I like to know where natural light is coming from. Is that a comment, a question? But, um, uh, so if it's a just question, mean, yeah. the natural light is typically coming just from the, the windows, really. Okay. So you're trying to balance the, the light that's inside the house and then the natural light is what's coming inside the house mm -hmm. and you need to kind of find a nice balance between the two. Is there a, I mean, you can't always plan, but is there a better time of day to shoot things? Or? Yeah, you can't always plan it, especially in the market where it's like you sure. need the list right. ASAP. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, but ideally, if a home faces east, you want to shoot it in the morning. And this is just strictly for exteriors. Hmm. Uh, if it's facing west, you want to shoot it in the afternoon because in that oh. way, that the sun is facing the front of the house that way. Okay. And then on the reverse of that, if you have like a pool or something in the backyard, maybe you want it. Like maybe if the house does face east, you still may want it in the afternoon because the sun's better on the, on the back. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it all kind of depends on what the home is, what, what the property is, what, what you're, you're trying, trying to sell. To sell. Yeah. Okay. Positioning, lighting, yeah. morning, afternoon. Just well, it all depends. Yeah, yeah, it really yeah, depends. It still depends. Yeah. Like I said, okay. if it's if it faces east, typically you want to do it in the morning before okay. eleven. Okay. Faces west. Okay. In the afternoon. Okay. Gotcha. All right. uh, south and north doesn't really matter. South doesn't matter because it's typically on the. Okay. Kind of just like it is what it is. You just okay. go for it. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. Although in the summer when the sun's higher in the horizon, it doesn't affect it as much. But in the uh -huh. winter when it's lower, sometimes the sun can be like directly behind the house, which can be difficult. Okay. But that's why you hire somebody. Figure that all yeah, out. Exactly. That's why we hire the pros. <laughs> so what? What questions, guys? What do you What do you want to know about? home photography, um, about um, the, uh, you know, the quality of photos, uh, what's, you know, any of you sold recently looking to sell? I mean, what's your experience? Or have you bought recently? What, when you bought your home, what led you to buy it? Like, what was appealing to you if you, you know, saw pictures? Share some of your experiences. Um, Um, yeah, so, yeah, so what, what would you like to know, or what, what's been your experience? Like, do you agree? Do you think that, you know, the pictures, the quality of them, like, is that when you look at, well, we're all on Redfin, we're always all curious, or when our neighbor's house goes on the market, yeah. you know, we're all looking at the pictures because we want to see it. What, what, is, what grabs you? What is exciting to you when you see that? I'm just curious what your experiences are when you're out there being a, a uh, consumer, or just even checking out photos. So if you want to talk, and so maybe we get a question, if you want to talk about um, Oh, good, good, thanks, well, yeah, Lynn. That's, that's good point awesome, too. thanks for that feedback. So, so uh, Lynn, who's watching, she's saying that she was, she felt she was definitely able to sell for the top dollar because she had professional photos done of her home. So. That's a great testament to what we're saying. Yeah, and that's another thing, like especially during COVID, a lot of people were adding on video and 360 tours because not as many people were going to showings. Yes. So then it's even more, more important, important then to be able to see the whole house. Mm -hmm. Like typically I wouldn't yeah. suggest doing a 360 tour because it shows too much of the house. Mm -hmm. And really the goal is to get the people in, in the, the house, house to see it themselves. Because they couldn't get in the house. Exactly. We had yes. to do that. Yeah, so, yeah. so you're saying post COVID times maybe like, it's more to give a teaser, peak interest to want to get them to right. the property. Just enough for the, just like a, a trailer to a movie. Yeah. If they Ooh. start showing too much, then you're like, oh, I feel like I just watched Yeah, I just movie. watched the whole like, movie. Why go pay the it. ticket? Exactly. Why pay the $12 or whatever it is now <laughs> to go to the movies? I don't know. It's, it's like a small fortune. Um, so someone's asking, how important are exterior photos? Um, I mean, just as important. I mean, uh, so if you're wanting a specific type of elevation obviously you want to know what it looks like um, and again kind of back to what we were talking about like the time of day for the front of the house when you're if it faces east you want to kind of shoot in the morning so the sun's facing it mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, cloudy days are actually just as good if not better because you're not dealing with a lot of harsh shadows um, sometimes you miss a lot, a lot of trees and shadows and everything from from that sort of thing mm. so the 
overcast days actually prevent all really? that and give you softer light, which is easier to, to deal with. Oh. So a lot of people, are, oh, I need a nice yeah, sunny day. Nice, it's like, well, I'm not, day. you don't necessarily huh. need that. For outside, predominantly, right? Yeah, is, interior, is interior doesn't, doesn't matter either, doesn't either matter. way. Okay. Now, obviously, you're going to get more light when it's right. sunny out, but, but it's, exterior, it's actually... But exterior, a little overcast, a little less shadowing yes. is... is, is is yeah. uh, optimal yeah. if it's, you know, of course you can't always pick the weather or pick and the day. And exterior photos, if we want to go on that a little bit more, mm -hmm. like not necessarily just the front of the house, not necessarily just the backyard, but the kind of surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. If they have amenities or if it's close to downtown or, right. you know, whatever. Okay, yeah. So you want to get a little flavor of the community, of the area, and then the, the, the features of the home from the outside and then um, and, and do that. So it's all important, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but I love what Kyle's saying and it'll be, I'm, It'll be kind of curious and interesting, you know, as we move through and past sort of COVID, like What's what will happen, model? right? What will yeah. be that sort of yeah. perspective? Will people still want to see everything online and not even go to the home, uh, you know, or people still, will people start to want to come back and do the open houses and travel? Now, granted, we got a lot more people moving from and coming from out of state and people moving different places. So I think there'll, there'll still be that need, I right? think it's going to be a situation to where they're not even going to go see the house unless they absolutely love it mm. from the photos mm. and, the, and the pictures. That could be a possibility. Mm. So, again, it's going to be one of those things where that's why it's going to be super important to have kind of the photos, the video, mm -hmm. everything. So then, then they say, oh, well, we love it so much. Now let's go see it. Okay. Or they can look through it and then kind of end up, end up saving time if they see it enough to where they don't like it. Then they don't waste the seller's time and they have to yep. get out of the house for the showing, that yeah, kind of thing. That. So. So if you were to give the top three tips to a homeowner or seller that's getting their home on it, what would, what would you say is the optimal things to do in your home? Like what are the best things to do uh, from staging. a photographer Staging standpoint? is number one. Okay. I could, I could take photos of a very not so nicely staged house and it's really not going to make a difference because, you know, the dog cage is sitting over there and the, the cat litter is over there. It's like it's still not going to be that appealing. So you want it to be as appealing as possible and then an I so here's the thing, most photographers don't move things and will not rearrange things in your home if you haven't right. done some of that. That's typically not, some will, some might, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll move minimal stuff, but they're not going to rearrange your whole yeah, house. I, they kind of walk in sort of ready to go. So if it's there, it's yes. there so for the most part. Pre-COVID, I may move like a, a towel or uh, paper towels or something like that and kind of move to the side. But now I, I try not to touch anything just so the homeowners know I'm not like going around. Hello, Tom. Stuff. How are you, Tom? Thanks for joining. Uh, um, okay, so staging. What's the other? Staging. What's another tip? Um, I like your your point about having all the the lights the same. Okay. Like making sure all the colors match okay. with the with the, the bulbs. So and your everything. lighting and your bulbs and your you know kelvins and all. Yeah, that ex good exactly. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing would just be just be knowing what the house needs. And granted, that that could be something that obviously you could talk to a professional about. Like, hey, do we need video on this one? Do we need 360 on this one? Do we need aerials on this mm -hmm. one? Um, but that kind of knowing, like, if there's a busy street behind the house, you don't really need aerials. Right. So or, we want to accentuate that. Right. <laughs> or if there's, you know, whether or not to photograph the, the unfinished basement or attic. You know what I mean? So things like that. So okay. just just general knowledge and knowing what 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 in your experience, like what should not be photographed? Like I look at pictures all the time because I'm a realtor and I look yes. at the MLS and I see some things and I'm like, do, do people really yeah. care about that? Like, yeah. do they want to see that? What are some things people really don't care about and don't need to see? So I very rarely, if ever, photograph half bathrooms. Yeah. Okay. Especially the small. I'm on board with that. That's me. Uh, I'm like, eh, unless yeah, there's like a really the nice vanity or something. <laughs> yeah, it's not cool enough. Eh, yeah. Uh, garages I typically don't unless there's like a workstation or something okay. like that. Okay. Right. Or a nice floor. You know, some have that really nice floor. Okay. Um, so Unfinished yeah. areas I typically don't. Um, but that's still something like. It probably doesn't hurt to have, but especially if they're like hiding all their stuff. stuff. In there, <laughs> then definitely not. But yeah. uh, another one is. Um, Typically, no closets. Yeah. And again, because that's mostly where people are hiding all their stuff. Unless it's a really cool, cool and closet. Like, sometimes, like, you know, like you've got like right, the, right. you know, Mac Daddy closet yeah. with all the cool features. But if, and, it's, if yeah. they're hiding all their stuff in there, then there's no, no point. No. But yeah, you, usually no. master closets are the exception okay. if they look good. Okay. Um, all right. So, so really don't care about closets. 
bathrooms for the most part, unless they're really super cool. And uh, garages, empty spaces, yes. undone spaces, things like that, unfinished areas. That makes sense. You want to yeah. focus on the things that are actually going to yeah. want the people. 100%. I guess my wife doesn't know what's going on. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Good deal. Um, um, well, so, <laughs> this is just, I'm just personally curious. What has been the craziest thing you've, like, what's been the craziest the most thing I've seen? Yeah, photographed. Yeah, let's let's spill the beans a little bit. We're getting that behind I've, the scenes. Let's get like, that I've you photographed know. or that I've actually seen. At let's a house. go with both. Okay, so the craziest thing I've photographed, I don't know that I can really think of something that was like, whoa, that was really weird. <laughs> um, maybe there's some stuff at like some weird furniture. Or, like sometimes I'll like open up a closet and there's you know one of those like Halloween things standing there that <laughs> scares laughing. the crap out of me. But um, but. There was this one time when I was uh, going around photographing some rental properties for uh, a management company. This was years ago. Uh, and it wasn't in the best area that it, it was kind of like, um, I, I don't want to be rude by saying it, it was kind of like out. Okay, all right, fine. Um, out in the uh, yes. outskirts? It was out, out, okay. out in the backwoods. So, um, I, I, you know, I'm walking around all the homes. All the renters were still in the house, and I walked in once to this one house, and it was literally just destroyed. like the house was destroyed. It was like a tornado was destroyed. Oh wow! They had Jerry Springer on the TV. They had dishes in the sink, like up to here. And you're supposed to photograph those things. Granted, it was most likely going to be an investor that was going to buy it anyway. Right? Yeah. But, but still. still, and I felt pretty uncomfortable. Uh, and then they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah." I was like, "I'm done in here. There are rooms upstairs. Yeah, go ahead upstairs." So I go upstairs to photograph the bedroom upstairs, <laughs> and I open up the door. Okay. They didn't mention anything. I open up the door, and there, I'm assuming it was their daughter laying in bed, like kind of not all the way clothed. She was not showing anything inappropriate. But okay. She was sleeping, so I just okay. open up the door, shut the door, and walked out. Oh, and I said, goodness. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm done, done here. Yeah, My work is I done. Just left, so. Okay. So. That was probably the most the awkward. The most bizarre, yeah. most awkward. Yeah, okay. Sure. So you've never had any other really crazy surprises or things? Um, <laughs> Not really. Every once in a while, like... Melissa, that is so funny. Yeah, that would definitely be... I was like, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I would say... There was one time where I think the homeowner wasn't expecting me, and I didn't know that they were home, and they were, like, in the bathroom or something like that. I mean, I didn't go in. I, I heard them, so then <laughs> yeah. I just didn't... I just kind of waited and then rang the doorbell, uh -huh. that kind of thing. But okay. That, that's very rare. Very rare. Yeah, yeah, not, not too many crazy things that yeah. you walk into. Yes. Oh, my gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah. All right, so any other words of wisdom or thoughts? Any questions, guys? What questions do you have for Kyle about how he does things, about getting covered home? a lot? I think we have. You know, we kind of talked about, first of all, first and foremost, I hope that if nothing else, you all understand the importance of the photography and the photos and getting your home ready to be, you know, just like magazine ready. I mean, it, it, it makes a difference. We don't want to be disingenuous. We're not trying to, you know, create something that you know isn't realistic in what the home is and what it's about but we do want to present its best features I mean it's like anything right when you you want to look your best you want to show your best side if you will you always like shoot my best side oh I'm still figuring out what side that is but that's a personal thing um, but you know we want to make your home really pop we want it to stand out and the whole purpose is to get it sold for the best highest best price in the shortest time that's the goal so you know there are all these different tricks and trips tips yeah. um, about it and uh, it's, it's in partnership with a, a good staging um, consult and someone who's really good with that sort of visual eye and then mm -hmm. a great photographer who knows lighting and w how to look in the lens and what's going to make your home really stand out um, you know one of the things that I I always I tell people it's like people don't want you have toilet paper on the roll there's a mixed view okay, on yeah, that. Let's, I know it's weird, but let's yeah. talk about it. Like, um, should you have it? Should you not have it? So I would say... Some people don't want to see toilet paper. Um, Although through COVID, we all wanted some toilet yeah, paper, yeah, exactly. didn't we? I, I would say, I know a lot of people like um, stack their extras like on top of the toilet seat. That's definitely not. Yeah, for, okay. For photos. Just okay. Remove them clear, completely. Clear. But if they're clean on the clear. roll, I think it looks weird if the roll's just empty i personally do but i've had mixed review is this has been an ongoing but i would discussion? say what i've what i've seen a lot and doesn't really make sense for like a real world thing but for staging I, for photos that's fine i've seen stagers like it's a full roll but and then they would like like, hotel like a like a like hotel a, when you like come into a hotel yeah, yeah they do like a little 
So that's that's fine. I would say that's probably hey, your best bet. Let's ask the audience. What do y'all think? Do you care if there's a roll of toilet paper or not in a photograph? I just I'm curious because I've gotten feedback both ways. What do y'all think? Toilet paper yes, toilet paper no. I would say make sure it's full and not like sitting on like all yeah, cockeyed. Exactly. Um, uh, I do not Melissa, I do not do family and kids. Yeah, Sorry. no, he only deals with homes and, and real estate and properties of that nature. I don't like yeah. to photograph things that can talk back. Yeah, he, he likes inanimate yeah, objects. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone said remove everything. Okay, so you don't want to see toilet paper rolls. Okay, fair enough. Definitely lids down, people. Lids down. Lids down, yes. That's a very big pet peeve. That makes me crazy it's when I look at pictures. Of, uh, I know. Things. Kyle has a really good list of stuff to get ready, but yeah, when I go through and see some back <laughs> yeah, the lids up. Yeah. Okay, so remove everything, and um, where can we see Kyle's work? That's what people want to know. Uh, my social media, um, my website, kylesantimedia.com. Okay. And Kyle pretty much Santee. Kyle Santee Media. Just Google that, and you'll find Kyle Santee Me Kyle Santee Media. Yes. Dot com, and you'll find his work online. Um, he does amazing work. We use him often. Yes, the yep. paper. yes to the toilet paper. All right. <laughs> you know, it's a mixed thing. So anyway. All right, guys. So we have covered a lot of ground in the in this in this space. Um, I always fold it over like a hotel. I love it. Yeah, there you go. Yes, like a hotel. Make it look nice and pretty and neat. Yeah. Yes, I do drone work. Yes. Melissa. Definitely does drone work. Yes. Um, and I have my part 107, so I do it legally. Yeah. And so I'm he's, insured. He's a legal driver of the drone. Oh, so this is good for. I mean, buyers or sellers, make sure that if they're doing drone work, you have to make sure that they have their part 107 because. Realtor can get fined if they're caught. If they're caught, it's just like speeding. You may not get caught. I don't okay. know what the fine is. I think I it's something crazy. Out. I think it's like ten thousand dollars. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. No. I haven't heard of anybody getting caught. What is your? Tell me what this thing is. This part one seven. Yeah. What is it? It's it's a certification to legally fly commercially. Okay. So if you're making money flying a drone, you have to have. If you're making money flying a drone, you need this commercial license. Yes. Okay. Good to know. And being insured is obviously always good. Okay. Too. All right. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Um, I appreciate you all. I thank you for joining us. Um, if there's no other questions, we are going to um, end our session today. But again, Kyle Santi Media, um, he does all real estate photography, obviously here locally in the, in, um, the Triangle area. But um, he also helps people and kind of coaches people around their about how you, how you look. And you know, a house is a brand, um, but a lot of us are um, building our brand on site. So maybe we'll have him back for that. But Anyway, thank you so much again, episode five, uh, edition with Diane, a fireside chat. And uh, thank I just can't appreciate you all enough. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.